Welcome to To The Barn Chats with Tom Crisp. Tom is a British event rider who is highly successful throughout the levels with over 25 CCI five star starts. And in 2018, Tom won the Lawrence Rook Trophy at Badminton. Tom is also an enthusiastic instructor holding regular clinics for riders. And in his spare time, he works as a retained firefighter. Mm. Hi, Tom, how are you doing? Hi, hi, Gabby, very well, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to catch up um, with all top professionals in the equestrian world. Whatever the circumstances, you're saying this is the first interview that you've done like this. Yeah. Um, it's now, you know, the, the new normal. Um, so, yeah, no, great to catch up. Hopefully in spring, I'll be able to come and hunt you down at a show and come and catch up in person. But it's nice to e-meet. <laughs> Um, let's start by introducing you introducing us to your team. So can you tell us a bit about your support team and your sponsors and your horses? Yeah, so um, I have a great little team here. Chief mechanic is Amy Akehurst, who uh, runs a yard. It feels like I really work for Amy most of the time. She uh, she runs a tight ship. And we have Saf Hodgson here and Maddie Blythe make up the team. Um, some great sponsors on board at the moment, High Wheeled Horse Hydro, Bailey's Horse Feed and uh, Lingfield Bets, who I know it's been tough for them this year, but uh, I appreciate that they've stuck in there and supported me when uh, times have been difficult this year. Fantastic. Yeah, I've heard a lot about um, your head girl, Amy. I've had some people messaging me on Instagram saying how great she is. It would um, be better sat here than me, I think. <laughs> they a sequel with Amy. <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah. Cool. So um, whereabouts are you based? So we're based in Mayfield, East Sussex. Yeah, I'm at, at my in-laws place. We're very lucky and fortunate to be here. Yeah. Great. Wait, are you near the beach? No, probably about 45 minutes away, an hour maybe. Okay. Yeah. Um, great. So we'll start talking a little bit about competing. So to you, what is the best part of competing? I think it's trying to get the best out of yourself on your horse, uh, whatever that may be, it doesn't necessarily mean you go out and uh, are in the prizes every time. It might be that you just have one less show dump down or uh, a personal best in the dressage. So, yeah, it's just about getting out and getting the best out of your horse for me. Yeah. And how do you, in, like, how do you work to ensure that you can get the best out of your horse when you're at a show? Well, I like to try and keep the routine, you know, make sure that you, you, you've you got the best routine for that horse, maybe an individual uh, type of routine that best suits that horse. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, it, I try and teach the show as much like a giant practice a lot of the time, it's only at the lower levels. Um, yeah, just uh, hopefully let the results look after themselves. If I know I'm getting the best out of myself and the horse, then generally the result will look after itself. Absolutely, that's a, that's a great way to look at it. Um, to you, how much is an, is attitude a factor in winning? Well, uh, attitude is an important ingredient in, in the recipe for success, along with you know talent, hard work, thick skinned, uh, a great support team behind you, horsepower. Yeah, it all adds in to 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 um, to help towards getting the best out of yourself and, and, and the yard. Yeah, You need the right people, right like-minded people behind you. I think that's very important as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's one team, one dream. Teamwork makes the dream work. It's absolutely mm. all coming together. It's not yeah. just you and the horse on the day. It's the journey that you've taken to get there with everybody's yeah. input. And everybody knows in this game, it's a long, hard, bumpy journey. Um, the success has come few and far between. Um, but they seem to really matter when you get them. Uh, and that's oddly the appeal to the sport is uh, it's not easy. Not everybody can do it. It's hard work. It hurts. It's 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 tough. It's tough on everybody. But it's um, if it was easy, it'd be boring, wouldn't it? Yeah, and everyone would do it. Everyone would do it. <laughs> um, how do you prepare for a big competition? Like I said before, I just try and keep in the routine. I don't try and change anything. Um, the big competitions are all, almost a natural progression for you and the horse. You don't just jump into a big competition. It's normally years of, of, of this particular partnership. Um, and hopefully, you know, you, you're going to 
turn up for the competition feeling prepared and ready for it. And 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 sometimes, you know, it doesn't always go to plan, as we know. Um, but uh, if you know that you're happy and you're ready, then um, you can go and give it your best shot, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Like I say, if it doesn't go to plan, it's you, you yeah. learn from it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and then that helps you prepare for it the next time. It's yeah. part yeah. about you know all building all the building blocks. Um, yes. What is your favourite event and why? Oh, that's easy. It's Burley, without doubt. Burley's been good to me. I I started off going to Burley as a kid. Um, camping on the campsite with family and friends, shooting around on our bikes, not for a minute ever thinking I was going to ride there. Um, heading down to the joke shop that they used to have, that they used to have at the, sh at the show. And anyway, Burley's fantastic. I've always loved it there. I've uh, generally had pretty good time there at Burley and um, it's it was a boyhood dream to always ride there. That's interesting because one of my, like literally the last question I've got for you is badminton or Burley. <laughs> They're both fantastic events, uh, and Bur and 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 Burley yes is a favourite, but badminton is also a very special venue. And uh, and my last run at badminton was a really good one, with being the highest placed first time completion there. Even though I'd probably had four shots at it already, for me it was it was nice to put those ghosts to rest. I uh, had a couple of falls, a couple of pull-ups, you know, it hadn't gone that well. And I think there was something about getting around it for the first time, completing and getting in the prizes was was quite special as well. Yeah, absolutely. What I love when I talk to five-star riders like yourself is that no matter how many times you've ridden at Babington or Burley, you still will always have that pinch me feeling when you're there again. It sometimes get worse the more times you go. I think when the first go, first couple of times, you're like, never been here. I'm just, I'm glad I'm here. Yeah. I can give it a go. I've got nothing to prove. I, I've made it here. And then when you, when you've completed and done a couple of good results, you then put that pressure on yourself that you should be doing better. You should be doing better. You want to get that top ten. You want to get in the prize money again. But it's, uh, it's an, it's, it's a competition. It's a sport that's a great leveler. You know, one minute you are head in the clouds, and the next you're head first in the mud. And, uh, Absolutely. That's so interesting. I never thought about the fact that the the more you go, the more pressure you put yourself under, and the more you want to achieve results. And it can be. Yeah. Um. What is the best aspect of your sport? The best aspect of it, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, like I said, it, it's a very tough sport. It takes up seven days a week. You commit your life to it. It takes it. It. it it's expensive. It. It never. All, it rarely goes to plan, but uh, as I said, there's something very magical about it. I think it is one of the toughest equestrian sports out there. Um, and yeah, absolutely. And, and 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 without doubt, I think it's the ultimate between horse and rider. What you can achieve. It's it it surprises me sometimes when I walk some of these big courses, thinking these horses are pretty special. And we we ask them to do that and they love to do it and they enjoy it and, and and most of our guys here they all live to go eventing absolutely and it's a complete lifestyle it's not just a sure. job it's not just a hobby it's a total like you say it's expensive and it's your entire life is devoted to it um and the sport each year seems to get tougher and every year the horses rise to the challenge mm. i love when we like badminton last year i walked badminton and you're like how how is yeah. anyone going to jump this? And then you look at the clears and clears inside the times and horses that just made it look easy. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's just incredible. And it's that talent that I think. Well, it's, um, that, com it's that confidence in the partnership, isn't there? That that horse, that rider at that time are the top of their game. And uh, yeah, they want it almost as much as the rider riders do. Absolutely, and you wouldn't have the rider in the start box on that horse unless they believed that the pair of them could go around and, and go around together safely, and that's, that's a, a real test of trust between yeah. the two. Yeah. Um, where do you see eventing going in the future? I'd like it to reach a wider audience. Um, it is, you know, arguably a, a still a very elitist sport. Um, and it would be great to appeal to a wider audience. I think that would it would help with sponsors. It would help with 
prize money, it would help with funding in the sport. So I don't know, you know, that's a bit above my pay grade how that might happen and who and who's able to make that happen. But there are ways, and I would love the support to, the sport to continue uh, as an Olympic sport and whatever in, in, in a very similar format to what it is now. Um, but it is changing, and I, I'm sure it will continue to change to, to, to modernise and keep up with, um, you know, the current way of, way of doing things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, that takes on to starting out. So how did you get into riding and eventing? I think I just turned up to uh, a riding school one day, very young. Um, we weren't a, a family. I wasn't born into a family with horses, like you, you hear a lot of. Um, my mum and dad weren't horsey people. Um, indeed, we kept our horse, first horse, in the bottom of the garden on off main A12 uh, in a single stable. And we we kind of progressed into um, two or three stable yard uh, in Suffolk. And um, I think we learned as a family. Um, and uh, so getting started, it was... Yeah, I, I wasn't somebody who was who, who ideally was suited to the sport, if you like. Um, but that was often my motivation and my drive. Because people would say, no, I don't think you can do it, Tom. It's not for you. Uh, you haven't got the backing, the support, the horsepower, all those kind of things. And um, and yeah, I, I did it the hard way, for sure. But, but not without the fantastic support of my parents, albeit, you know, out of... Um, a small yard in in Lowestoft. So how did you go from there, from keeping your horse at the bottom of the garden to riding round Burley? I think it's a long journey. Um, I, I work in pupil placements. Um, I think they are very valuable. Um, we, I went to Ireland and trained out there for a bit. I trained in a few yards in this country, and I didn't have the facilities. We didn't have the facilities and the know-how back in Suffolk. So I would take one horse and go and train and ride and work. To, in yards which were already at that stage um, better set up and suited to, to, to eventing and, and learned an awful lot from that. And what challenges did you overcome in getting to where you are today? Well, um, there are many, there are many challenges. It's not, as we've spoke about, it's not an easy sport to get into. Um, it, I'd like it to be more accessible to more people. Um, so yeah, the challenges are real. They're, they're out there for a lot of people. Um, finding the, the finances, the time. Do you work full time jobs? Do you commit to um, riding full time? Yeah, so there is that life work balance there. Um, finding the right, having the venue, have, having the right facilities, having the right support and people behind you is never ending, and we're we're striving and working hard for that even now. Um, what advice would you have for people wanting to make a career out of their riding? Oh, difficult one. Career. I mean, um, I suppose what you career, a living, a, a profession. Um, I haven't managed to achieve it yet. Riding horses. Uh, we all ride. ride riding at five star is is almost uh, a hobby for me, you know. And I have to fund that hobby, if you like, by buying and selling horses, teaching finding other work which leads on to the the fire service yeah. um and finding ways in which we can fund our habits if you like yeah that's a really interesting point because uh you know there's many young riders who go to events and see you riding at Bampton Burley and think wow it's you know they're riding at the top of their sport mm. and they're obviously making a career out of it and actually behind the scenes mm. It's not, you like you say, buying and selling, producing horses is, is a popular way for... Yeah, people. in the beginning I was was working as a working pupil and in the evenings I would work in restaurants as a waitering and, and things like that to try and fund it as a lad, yeah. So the main bit of advice is that if you want it hard enough, you can do <laughs> you're it. going to work hard enough. Do yeah, it. yeah. It, there is no easy way in this game, but uh, like I say, if you can deal with the hardships of it, you'll be right halfway there. And so you had numerous achievements as a young rider. Um, so you were second place in the national championships in 1999, and you were the highest placed young rider at Burley in 2001. 
Yeah, on a little 15.3 mare uh, back when it was long format. It's, I'm, I'm getting old now. Um, but, wow. but uh, yeah, there, that was, that was, a uh, that was a very, uh, a, a very nice time in my life. Um, young riders, it's great junior program, young rider program. They're great to get into. Um, they help set you up. You can see the team. You can see how how, how the support is there. And um, yeah, I was very fortunate to be on the team that year and and make it to the uh, Europeans as well, where we had some good results. Yeah. And eventing is a solo sport within a team sport. And so, so, like you say, if you're on the young rider team or the Europeans or the Olympics. You're, it's between you and your horse, but then you're representing your team. So it's an odd aspect. Um, and it's great, like you say, for young riders, the Young Rider Programme to help you understand that and to real, like help you realise how supported you are by it, because yeah. otherwise it can be quite lonely. Yeah, yeah. And, but, but the ride in the eventing community it, it is just that. It's a fantastic community. Everybody knows the hardships that you go through. Everybody's often been there themselves. And although we all compete against each other, young old male female if you like um we're all in we've all been there and there is that camaraderie and support there uh which is rare and quite nice at the same time yeah absolutely would you say there's a difference between riding as a young rider and a senior um no i don't think so i think um the, ch the same challenges are there the same challenges are there they are uh and as a as a as a young rider, you kind of feel like you've got your whole career ahead of you. <laughs> now, now I'm becoming as a senior and getting on a bit. I feel like my career is maybe sort of still not ahead of me, or is 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 more behind me. I don't know. They're, they're the sort of challenges you ask yourself the whole time: is uh, is you know where you're at and where you see yourself going in the game. For sure. sure, it's a different outlook to mm. what you had 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so we'll move on to motivation. So what drives you to get up in the morning and go and train every day? Well, at the moment, it's Hermione about half past five, waking up and uh, watching Hey Dougie or Yakadee. So uh, she's, a, she's a pretty regular alarm clock first thing in the morning. <laughs> um, but, it, but what I like is the, is the unpredictability of, the, of, of it. It's the variation. Every horse in the eye is a different personality. Um, and I look at it like, like I'm their, 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 I'm their coach, you know, I'm their partner, I'm their, I'm their workmate. And some come out in training like it's a new day every day and others come out thinking, oh, not this again. So it is a variation in, in, in the horses and with the horses you work with. Um, and, and I've always worked better with horses than have people. I think arguably I probably understand horses more than I do people. But, but uh, I still enjoy working with them. And it doesn't matter what level you are, whatever achievement it is, it's still, uh, it can still be rewarding at every level. I love that, the idea that you're the horse's coach and that you're a workmate. It's a, yeah. it's a you've real... Made reference, you've made reference a couple of times to it as, as us being athletes here. And uh, I would say we were more, you know, I'd be more a horseman than an athlete. And I don't know if you, some of the eventers out there are certainly wouldn't class as athletes either. Yeah. <laughs> and the horse is the athlete? Horse as the athlete, sure. <laughs> He's the one you've got to look after, yeah. Okay, so my next question was, how does being an athlete make you a better person? I'll say, how does being a horseman make you a better person? Well, I think you'd, it teaches you a lot of work ethic. Um, it teaches you responsibility, disappointment, coping with failure. You know, learning to turn failure on its head and make it into a success. I think that is what I've learned. And that's one of the things I can take forward and learn and, and bring forward into everyday life is then not, not to give up too soon. Um, and uh, uh, and I think yeah, it, th they are some good life skills. And, and my kids now are learning the same with their first ponies and being part of the pony club and the scene. Is uh, yeah, what you've got to know is you've got someone out there seven days a week that needs looking after, that will that will teach you an awful lot, that will teach you responsibilities. Um, and and that is I don't think you get that enough nowadays with a with a with a lot of youngsters and a lot of the generation. It's all too easy. Just pop on yourself on a screen, isn't it? That's why. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. Um, Pony Club is just incredible for teaching you from such a young age. Mm. Just things like concepts such as you've got to make sure that your horse is fed before you are. 
those yeah. you know that's a life skill then you like you know or just a perspective on life that you carry through with you and you don't realize that you've learned it as a youngster because it's just how how life is yeah so, yeah um okay so what is important to you after a tough day what do you say to yourself um I, i'm well have a tough day i think you you could you could teach it look at it as a as a learning process can't you um if something's gone wrong you We've all been on those long drives home, overanalyzing. Did I override? Didn't I override? Should I have picked a better line? Did I warm up correctly? Didn't did I do enough of this? Did it? And and a lot of it is just preparation. If you've made a mistake, yes, you can just be unlucky and make a mistake sometimes. Um, and other times you could be like, oh, maybe I wasn't quite ready for that. Take it back to the drawing board, reassess, retrain, and come back at it another time. You know, I think. It, this game always makes you reflect and really, really look at yourself and look at what you're doing. Um, and, uh, and and sometimes you can overanalyze things. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you come across as very level-headed, which is a complete strength to be when you're an event rider. <laughs> yeah, I think you learn to be. I think uh, you, you, it does, it does. It's a sport which does level you, like I said before. It really yeah. does. Yeah. And um, what's been your biggest lesson in life? My biggest lesson, I'm still learning it. Still learning it. And I think you never stop learning. And I think those are the times you ever think, I know it all, then you know, you're you 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 aren't you're no longer gonna be making progress. So yeah, always learning. Keep learning to um, keep making progress. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about young horses in your yard? Do you breed? Do you um, go out and source them as youngsters? I know you said that you buy, you buy and sell and you produce. What's your route to finding your future stars? Well, um, I, I kind of leave the breeding to others. Like we do run a small breeding program here, which I have a look at and oversee. But it is it is it's like flipping a coin. Sometimes you 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 can you can do everything right and then the horse doesn't always turn out the way you want it to but it's it's fun because this are these are the next generation of young horses coming through and you never know looking at that one or that one if that's going to be going around Babington and Burley in, in four or five years time um so it's that kind of will it won't it that potential there uh and uh, yeah so we do breed a few here we do go out and buy a few from all over the place um, occasionally, but um, yeah, it's they don't certainly don't come with crystal balls. So it's uh, it's trying to pick a horse which uh, ticks the boxes, moves straight, good technique over a fence, and hopefully has the right attitude for the for the training and the sport. Because much like us, they also have to learn to cope with disappointment. Um, and the good horses, the ones you see out there time and time again at the top levels are the ones who can take the setbacks and learn and move forward from them and not like cave in on themselves and, and, and quit. And it's exactly the same attributes that we have as riders. Yeah, that's fascinating. I never thought about the mental aspect for the horse. Mm. They're um, the good one. They come in all shapes and sizes. You only have to look at a trotter at a five star and, and there are all types of horses there. And a lot of them... Um, they may not have the best confirmation. They may not move the best. Uh, they may have had a tough road up to there, but if they've got the right attitude and a big heart, then that's 90% of it at that level. Yeah. And would you say if you've got, um, you know, owners come to you and they say, I would like to go and buy a horse for you to ride, do you have a specific stamp that you like? Would you choose mare over gelding or would there be another attribute that would be an overruling, like you say, the attitude and, and the heart? Would that be I mean, I, I'd be ve I'm, I get very excited with any owners come along wanting to buy horses. Uh, and uh, I definitely don't have a, a stamp. I've ridden um, you know, a few different horses at the highest level and they are very different horses. Um, some gelding big lopy open strided horses and then my little good mare at the moment is only 16 hands and she's like a pocket robber she's very fiery very quick uh, very temperamental so i think um it's helped from riding many many different types of horses from the beginning often the difficult ones often the ones which uh you know others wouldn't ride i i'm 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 left and have to make something of it might mean that i was never the top of the game and, and and winning world points but it meant that i became a very good horseman i learned to try and 
work with every type of horse and, and get the best out of it. Like I say, that may well be just a double clear around a novice or it may be a double clear around five star. You, you, as long as you're getting, you feel like you can get the best out of the horse, then that, that satisfies me for sure. Okay, so we'll go, we'll talk a little about like the current climate. So obviously 2020 has been far from what anyone expected. Um, we were so lucky to actually get half of the event season. Yeah. Um, picked back up in July and you were very busy out competing. Um, and we actually, it was amazing that we even got to watch Poe Five Star. It was just incredible to be able to get yeah. that star action this year when we thought we yeah. weren't going to get anything. Two, two weeks later, they shut down, didn't they? So it was, uh, they just about managed it. Just yeah. about, it was crazy. Um, so how did your season and training adjust to cope with COVID? Well, we still have a yard full of horses that need to go out and train and work. It's it's hard because it does affect your motivation. If you know you haven't got anything to, you know, no badmintons and burleys to look forward to, they really do take the wind out of your sails, particularly for me. Um, and uh, so then you just have to come out, make sure your horses are topped up. They need to come and do a little bit. Some of the older horses, and you've seen it with some of the other riders is they don't necessarily have to come out and do very much at all. A lot of them have been turned away and saved for next year. But I think when your horses are fit and they're well and they're ready to go, I think if you can get them out and, and uh, get a few runs under the belt, I think uh, it, you're better off. You were better off to do so, yeah. So you gave, did you give yours a bit of a holiday to start with or you kept them all just ticking over? I kept them all ticking over. Uh, I did keep them all ticking over. I think all of us thought, you know, We'll be coming back. We'll be coming back. When will we be coming back? Um, and um, yes, yeah, so all of us st stayed in work. I lost a few few horses at the beginning of the year, which was a shame, um, understandably so, with the climate um, and um, and things like that. But uh, yeah, the ones we the ones that stayed here, I, I kept busy, kept busy with. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was the uncertainty, and then everything picked up so quickly the season resumed so quickly so you must be so grateful that you've kept them in work well that was it yeah um it was like oh they almost gave you sort of a month didn't they all of a sudden yeah. we're running here there and everywhere um but i think we had done really well they did well it wasn't easy for anybody was it to 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 string any kind of a fair competition and, and any kind of schedule together for us all to go out and plan um but yeah i'm happy all of mine that I wanted to run came out and had a run, you know, this year. Great. So, um, yeah, so you were running most of us from July right up till October um, yeah. at all levels. So can you tell us a little bit about just a couple of maybe your favourites? I don't know if you're allowed favourites, but a couple, of your <laughs> a couple of horses that really shone this season to you personally. You thought that they, for their personal kind of level, they, they were really I, I, I'm very happy with the way all of them went. In their, in their, you know, where they are in their training, where they are in it, uh, you know, the age of them, where they are in their training, um, their levels they're at, they've all come out and all performed personal best. They're all improving every time out, and and uh, yeah, they're very exciting horses for the future at every level. Can't ask for anything more than coming out every time and and doing their best. Yeah, it would be nice. Don't get me wrong. It'd be nice to have the odd win every now and again. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> um, what's your plan with your horses from now over the winter months? So obviously, we are in lockdown two at the moment. Yeah. Um, and then you'll have the season would start beginning of March, ideally. So, what what's your normal plan in a normal year and for this year with your horses with winter training? Do you um, like you know with your fitness with um, and and do you have specific horses where you think, oh, actually last season this one wasn't great with ditches, so I'm going to go out and train a bit more, or is it more of a broad sheet that they all do the same sort of thing? Go show jumping, yes. Yeah, so some of the ones don't always make eventers, um, and uh, and I'd like to get a little bit more into the show jumping tour. So this winter, we're going to bring a few out and jump, which would be fun. Um, and the ones which are being marked for eventing, yeah, they will hopefully start uh, coming back into work in December. Normally, um, November for me is like quiet month anyway. Most of the eventers have uh, an easy time in November, and we start bringing them up in December, ready for uh, um, ready for the season to kick off in in March, whatever that looks like. 
great. So that would be great to be out and be competitive over the winter, going and jumping and yep. keeping your boots shiny. So yeah, great. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've got a couple of fan questions. Well, actually, I've got a fan question for myself. I was really fascinated to find out about how you got into firefighting and how it works with your busy schedule. Yeah, um, it. I don't really know how I got into it. <laughs> um, I think it was one. It was a quiet a year or two. Um, I had a couple of friends in it, and they said, "Oh, why didn't you come along and have a look, see how you get on?" And I went along, and I did a bit of. Uh, did a few initial courses and found it quite interesting and quite difficult um, but also really rewarding and as somebody who's kind of never really had a structure in his life I've just worked and worked with horses I felt like it probably it gave me uh, a little bit of structure joining the fire service and there's some great skills you learn and 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 as I say it's a it's a rewarding job and it's a retained position so I'm on a pager and I have to provide a certain amount of hours a week and I can just crack on and ride and train as normal and the odd time that my pager goes off I'm up at the station ready for turnout within five minutes because it's uh it's a local station to us here okay wow that's a very interesting yeah line to your career <laughs> no, i know i know it's uh not what you'd expect is it um but uh yeah i, I so far I've, I've enjoyed i've been in nearly seven years now uh and i um i learned to drive the truck and also now i've um become a crew manager as well at mayfield oh right okay wow um okay so we've got another one which was from isabella which is how do you control your nerves at a big event, especially as just before you enter the dressage arena? That's a good one. You can't stop yourself being nervous. You are going to get nervous. And it's either, and, and normally it's because you really want to do well um, for me. Um, and you just have to tell yourself, this is what you train for. You've got to rely on your training. You've got to rely on all that muscle memory and your instinct as part from your training. And just go in there and do what you know you can do. Yes, the occasions are going to get to you. Yes, the horses at that level know this is a big occasion. Very rarely you get to go and practice in arenas like Badminton and Burley, isn't it? You can, you, you, it, it's it. They are um, one of very. Nothing quite prepares you for that atmosphere. Nothing quite prepares you for that. No, and the excitement of it, and of course, you know, tension will creep in, and like anything, riding a horse, tension will will spoil it. Tension will spoil your test. Um, and you can't help that. So yeah, it's learning to control it. It's learning to control it, and um, we still are learning. You know, it's one of those things where it's uh, it, it the butterflies never go away. <laughs> they just turn into maybe happier ones and less nervous. Yeah, ones. yeah, yeah. I think it, I'm much better now. The older I get, I'm much much better about it now. In the beginning, I was a lot younger. I struggled more with them. Um, and now I know what the game's like. Sometimes you can go in there and do your absolute best test, but the judges don't necessarily think so. Other times, you know, you 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 don't think you've done a good test and you get a good mark. It's, yeah. It's, it's one of the really flies on the um, opinion of others for the outcome. Yeah, which is crazy because it's so different to cross country and show jumping where it's just so clear cut. Yeah. The result. Yeah. Um, okay, another quick one. Have you played any other sports? Yeah, no, I was always very sporty when I was younger. Um, I was played rugby for the school, football. Um, I did gymnastics, actually, up to national level, up to when I was about 13 or 14. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, um, I took on, I took, I took up riding probably quite late, um, around about sort of 14, 15. Did you ever consider going further with gymnastics? um no not really um it just it just didn't work out for me one way or the other i think i for me to take it any more seriously i'd have to have moved out of lowestoft moved out of suffolk and gone to a and gone to a bigger center yeah uh, um, so that would have mean an up an upheaval for us all which we weren't prepared to do at the time yeah and we've also had someone ask what's your go-to drink after a long day 
a go-to drink. I mean, probably people think it's quite excited about alcohol, and I'm not that way. I don't drink really that much, um, only on the odd occasion. But um, go-to drink, probably something containing gin. Uh, or a nice cup of tea. <laughs> or a nice cup of tea, yeah. Very British, can't beat it. <laughs> cup of tea, for sure. <laughs> okay, and then we've just got some real quick fire questions. Um, one word to describe yourself. Well, blimey, stubborn. <laughs> I thought you were going to say motivated or something like that. But... <laughs> All that's well, but... <laughs> uh, Who inspired you as a young athlete? As a young horseman? Um, uh, Ian Stark. Okay. How old were you when you first started riding? You said... Yeah, I probably started riding around about five in the local riding schools and things. But, yeah, more seriously... 13, 14 onwards. Uh, best piece of advice that you've been given? Uh, the ones I ignored. <laughs> uh, who is your sporting hero? Ooh, crikey. That's a good one. Um, well, Ian Stark in the eventing world and Murphy himself, they, they were brilliant. Um, sporting heroes, mm, my dad. Ah. Oh. He was a brilliant sportsman, played football, rugby himself. He can still beat me at squash, tennis, yeah. golf, everything. Yeah, he was a naturally a very good sportsman. Brilliant. Uh, what is a strength of yours? Strength of mine is to um, don't don't quit. Mm. That's kind of ways up with your stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> That, then that leads on. It leads on to what my weaknesses is, which is not knowing when to quit. <laughs> <laughs> Works well, balances. Yeah, that's um, just it, finding that balance, isn't it? Yeah. What did you have for breakfast today? Uh, I shared a bowl of porridge with Hermione. And yeah. what's your favourite film? Oh, that's a good one. That's gonna people. People are gonna be what really? But I remember the film that stands out the most. It's probably because where I was based at the time which was in Ireland, was Titanic. Oh, really? Oh, that's bad, isn't it? Just remember <laughs> it being, a, I don't know, just where I was at the time, it just sticks in my head. <laughs> but, uh, I'm down to that. I no, don't... no, I know. There you go. That's an exclusive. No one knows that. <laughs> no um, thanks for the exclusive. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Favourite meal? Oh, chicken chips, gravy and sweet corn. Good shout. Random. And then I did have badminton sort of early, but you've answered that. But I, I guess, um Paul Lemoulin. Oh, good one. Um I think I'd go Lemoulin because it's just a bit closer. Pose a 24 hour drive away. It's like it's a long slog for a for horse and rider. Yeah. Pretty cool that you can answer that question as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Tom. It's been so great to chat to you. It's been really eye-opening to just yeah, you've got a very different view to a lot of people that we've spoken to, and it's really interesting. Um mm -hmm. And I won't make the mistake of calling you an athlete again. <laughs> nah. Well, obviously, obviously I am an athlete. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I wouldn't say it in that context. Great. Well, thank you so much. This has been great. And I really look forward to hopefully bumping into you in spring. Uh, yeah. We'll be hopefully seeing you at some events. Ooh, yeah. Have a great winter and catch up soon. Thanks, Thanks very much, everybody. Stay safe. Thanks. Bye.